Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Larae, and in this video, I'm going to be going over Gemini Sun with Leo Moon. I'm going to start off the video by talking about what a typical Gemini Sun is like, and then I'm going to get into the moon placement and talk about it as a combination. So if there's certain aspects of the Gemini Sun description that don't quite resonate or make a lot of sense, then hold on until you hear the moon placement, and it'll probably tie together quite nicely and make a lot of sense. Um, little disclaimer before I get started that, you know, even when you do hear your moon placement, there may be some aspects that don't quite make sense. Maybe it's a little different because... I can't see the rest of your chart. So keep in mind, this is only two placements of your entire chart. And so when I am talking about these descriptions and this combination, I mean like in general, most of the time tendencies, this is what the person with this pairing would act like, barring any other placements that would counteract these expressions. And that is a good segue to tell you that if I now have paid birth chart readings available, so if you would like me to look at the rest of your chart and get a more complete and in-depth examination of your chart, I have paid readings available on my website, and so I will leave a link in the description. I have five different packages available as of the time I'm recording this with five different prices. So link in the description if you would like to check that out. I will also probably be glancing over here from time to time because I have my very thorough notes and I don't want to miss every anything. When I'm talking to the camera, honestly, my mind goes blank. So I have very carefully crafted notes that I put together myself. So just so you know, let's get started with Gemini Sun. So Basically, I'm going to list a few descriptive words of Gemini, and then I'm going to get into giving you a more complete picture of how this plays out in real life. I'm all about explaining things practically, giving you a complete picture of this, of like a real person with this pairing. And so Gemini sons are very energetic, social, adaptable, conversational. They're great communicators. They're persuasive, curious, restless, easily bored, high strung. They tend to quite enjoy gossip and they are a bit disorganized. So Geminis are often social butterflies. And again, this can depend on whether this person is introverted or extroverted. I know a lot of people assume that all Geminis are extroverted because they tend to be that way, but some are introverted. Even if they are introverted, they're usually very good at socializing and communicating. It's just whether or not that exhausts them or not and they need alone time. But for the most part, they just really enjoy having conversations with all types of people and they're good at it. They make really good first impressions because they're really able to tailor their conversations and how they present themselves to who they're around. They're really good at reading a room. Now, Geminis have a lot of energy. They are very easily restless and they're very easily bored, and so they need a lot of stimulation. Now, because of this, they not only enjoy change, but they actually need it. They need they need that variety, though that fresh experiences and that change in their life in order to keep them entertained. Because they're always on the go, looking for new topics, places to explore, things to learn, people to talk to, their knowledge of subjects tends to, and their connections to people tend to be a little more surface level and not super deep. And that's because they just don't, because they're always on the move to new, new, new. They don't have enough really time to be able to go deeper into the, a subject or go deeper with connecting with someone. And it's because they get bored so easily. And so they tend to know a little about a lot and never really master anything, kind of a jack of all trades. So if a Gemini does actually know a lot about one's particular subject or like maybe even mastering it, going to school for it, pursuing it as a career, that sort of thing. Or if they have a really deep connection with someone, they're married to them, very committed to them. That's something that they're learning or that someone that they're with has managed to keep them interested for a very long time to the point that they're willing to commit to it. That's And that's a really actually impressive feat because they're so easily bored. So if it's a subject that they're learning, maybe they're going to school for it, then it's something that doesn't have a ceiling. It's something that just keeps them interested to where they're always learning new information in it. There's new levels to it. And anytime they learn a new piece of information, it's just as exciting as when they first learned about the topic. It's going to be something like that. But I feel like as soon as Gemini feels like they've mastered something and there's no nothing more like new to learn, like there's no point. It, it's so boring for them. Most Geminis would have abandoned it far before they got to that point. And so if they are mastering a subject, it must be very interesting to them and have new levels to it. And if they're really committed to someone and have that like deep either deep friendship or deep 
relationship with someone, then that's a person who is really able to adapt and keep up with Gen Gemini. They're, they're definitely not boring. It's someone who's always growing with them, who's always down for their adventures or their fresh experiences and willing to do hobbies with them, or at the very least hear about them and be just as excited to hear about them as they were the first time Gemini told them about something cool they did. They actually love to listen to people who are experts, masters, or just know a lot about one subject. And that can actually be really attractive and interesting to them because they're not generally like that. And because then if you know a lot about something or you're an expert or a master, chances are that is information that Gemini does not know. And so it's very fascinating to them because they probably don't know it because they haven't been able to devote enough time to get to that level. And so it's really fascinating and probably attractive to them to be able to learn that from someone and because then you're connecting on that intellectual level, which Gemini really likes. Now with Gemini, they are very energetic, but sometimes this isn't always physical energy. It's always, it's, I think pretty much every Gemini has that mental energy. They're very mentally energetic and then some can be physically energetic, but and that usually kind of depends on if they're more extroverted or introverted. If they're more introverted, it's mostly just that, that mental energy. And if they're more extroverted, it's usually kind of a combination of both, but they'll probably express that energy more physically in order to try and process everything that's going on there in their, in their head. So Gemini believes in many truths and like an infinite number of truths as opposed to Gemini's opposite sign in Sagittarius, which is in the search of or believes in one absolute truth. For Gemini, something can be true for one person while the opposite can be true for another person and Gemini views both as being equally valid and equally true. And Gemini also gets very caught up in the moment when they're having a conversation with someone that's the most important conversation at that time. And so when they're talking with someone, they could be talking with person A and agreeing with them that what they believe is true and then they could have a conversation with person B and now that conversation is the most important and they could agree with person B who believes the exact opposite of person A and then people can kind of wonder about this inconsistently like you agreed with both of us and it's because one, they got caught up in the moment, and that's the most important thing in that moment, but also, again, Gemini believes in multiple truths, and so they believe that person A is true because they that believe, they believe it's true for them, and person B as well. So when people wonder, like, oh, which one do you believe? Like, for Gemini, it's both, it's all of them. No two beliefs are mutually exclusive in their mind because it's true for someone. And this is kind of how I imagine Gemini. Like, you know, when someone starts drinking really early in the day, and they usually get called out for it, and then they're like, it's five o'clock somewhere. Gemini is like getting called out for talking about an opinion or belief that contradicts something they said earlier and they're like, it's true for someone or I got caught up in the moment. And that's pretty much a good summary of Gemini. And now another caveat to this is that they're Gemini, I think, is notorious for saying things and making plans and then just as easily going back on them. And again, it's from getting caught up in the moment. In the moment, it was the most important thing. And they're like, yes, let's do it. And they agree to it. But then the moment passed and they're probably caught up in a new moment that is now the most important thing. Or they could have just completely forgot about the first thing that they agreed to. So like a good way to summarize that would be flaky, I guess. Yeah. Which as an Aries, I find extremely frustrating. But and now, like I said about Gemini saying one thing and then say agreeing to the complete opposite, it's also really hard for Gemini to like keep track of everything that they say and everything that they agree to because for them it's as fast as like their thoughts. It would be like trying to keep track of every thought that you had in a week. And you're probably going to have some pretty contradictory thoughts throughout the week. It's based, how do you feel about your life and your job when you're stuck in traffic on the way to the work Monday morning to a job that you don't enjoy versus how do you feel about your life Friday when you're about to go party for the weekend or go on a week trip. So those are probably be some conflicting thoughts and feelings, but for us that, and for us that's considered normal for Gemini, like that's how it is when they're expressing information and, and points of view and opinions and beliefs. It's as fleeting as that it, it, and it can be quite contradictory and and to them that's normal because Gemini is actually quite good it's the sign of the twins they're they're it's a dual sign it like they have an alter ego it's like they have two sides to them I mean you ask any Gemini you know or if you're a Gemini then you know what I'm talking about but if you don't know like if you ask a Gemini do you feel like two different people every single one of them will be like yes all the time like they it's like they have an alter ego or they just have just two different sides to them and both are just as genuine and it depends which side you're getting which one wants to express itself today you know now like i mentioned gemini loves com like 
talking, communication, conversations. And if they're a little more introverted, I find this is usually directed a little more into say like writing, texting, social media. If they're more extroverted, um, then that's having conversations and talking with people. And usually it's the more extroverted ones I find that tend to really enjoy the gossip. But I think pretty much every Gemini enjoys gossip. And I feel like when they say they don't, they're lying. That's a different side of them that was out that day. The other side of them loves gossip. So, and now Geminis are like really good at gossip too. They, they know everything. Like they, if at work, they know everything that's going on. If you want to know all of the hot gossip, if you want to know like the rumors, everything that's going on, ask a Gemini. They, like my mom's a Gemini and she knows everything that happens at work. She knows absolutely everything. If you want to know what's going on, you talk to her. If she doesn't know, she will find out. It's like she's got eyes and ears and spies everywhere. She is the first to know about everything and part of why is because she, again, is that Gemini able to get along with everyone genuinely so everyone likes her and so they tell her everything so then she knows everything. All right, so now I wanted to add some of the unevolved characteristics of Gemini and I wanted to make sure that I gave them a fair shake first because I feel like they get a lot of hate, especially online. I take these sun moon combination videos very seriously. I put a lot of work and effort into them because I'm making them for someone who either has this pairing or loves someone who does. And so I want them to be beneficial. You know, I, I the last thing I want is for someone to come watch these videos and feel like shit about their sign because I know how that feels and it's just completely unhelpful. So I want to make sure that when I make these videos, I'm doing every sign and every pairing justice and that I'm showing that every sign and every pairing has the potential to be a great person when they're healthy and to really show what all of the signs and pairings have to offer. And so I'll be honest, that's kind of why I fell behind in the sun moon combinations because I got to Gemini and it was just one of the most challenging signs to fully figure out. And it's not like I didn't know about them before and it's not even like I particularly dislike Gemini. It's just that like, you know, we're all approaching astrology from our own biases and I'm an Aries, you know, I, that is sextile Gemini so that like I kind of get them a little bit, but the rest of my chart, I have three planets in Sagittarius, which is opposite Gemini. And then I have two planets and my midheaven in Pisces, which is square Gemini. And so I have a lot of opposite, like difficult aspects to Gemini. So it makes, it was just difficult for me to fully get them, like fully understand them on a deep level and really appreciate them and what they have to offer. And I didn't want to make these videos until I got to that point. And I don't make any of my videos until I'm at that point. Because the last thing I want is to just pile on the shitty stereotypes because every sign gets that enough already, including Gem I think especially Gemini. <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm very aware that every sign has their challenges, their unevolved characteristics. And so I don't want to completely gloss over those. And so so I'm going to get into some of the unevolved characteristics of Gemini now. So unevolved Geminis can be cunning, superficial, manipulative, and they're very, they can be very, like when, again, unevolved, not all Geminis, but they, they are very good at lying and bending the truth. And they can also be unfaithful to their partners. And unfortunately, some stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason. And unevolved Geminis can be two-faced in the worst way, you know, where they're talking like they're really nice, polite to your face, and then they're talking shit about you and spreading rumors behind your back. Or they do something really shitty, and then they pretend it never happened, and they act like everything's normal. And then if you ever try to confront them about it, they're the kind of people that will either avoid it, deny it, or lie some more. And again, this is unevolved Geminis. It's essentially the worst expression of the sign. That said, though, most Geminis are big avoiders, especially when it comes to conflict. So pretty, even if they are a generally healthy Gemini, if you try confronting conflict head on, it's probably not going to go very productively, <laughs> or at least it's just going to make them very uncomfortable. Why is your butt wet? Say hello. You're so pretty. Now, before I get to the moon placement, I wanted to let you know that I have officially launched my relationship course called Relationship Astrology 101. In that course, I would teach you all about how to build amazing relationships based off of your birth charts and compatibility. And this isn't just going to be some one of those auto-generated charts. We're going to really dive deep into your charts and understanding how you and your partner, if you have one, how you guys are compatible and what ways you aren't because everyone has certain amounts of compatibility and difficult aspects in their chart. And 
so we would actually go over how to come overcome some of those challenges in order to build a truly fulfilling amazing relationship so if you were interested in that check it out i have a link in the description enrollment is available until august 15th i may extend it if we need some more time to get some more students but as of the time i'm recording this it's available at a discount until the 15th so check that out link in the description so now we get to leo moon so leo moons are very energetic charismatic passionate they love to be the center of attention they are quick learners when it's something they are passionate about and so unlike gemini like gemini wants to learn new things all the time has their hand in many different pies leo needs to have some form of interest or be passionate about it they're very social they have a good sense of humor and are motivated by status they're very confident they're very confident but they also are really reliant on other people in their life to confirm this to confirm their their worth and they really can sometimes be a little over reliant on compliments if they don't have that kind of support and like people in their life that make them feel good about themselves and make them feel valued and if basically if they don't truly know their worth they can actually be quite insecure and that's usually when leo moons and leo the sign in general can slip into being vain self-centered and even potentially narcissistic it's usually because they're actually not truly confident and so they're trying to overcompensate but for the most part it's a very very confident placement that's just very sure of their identity and when they're healthy they're actually very giving and generous to the people in their life because they want to they want to see their loved ones succeed as well and feel as confident as they feel like i said gemini wants new things and has their hand in all these different pies wants all these new experiences but then at the same time leo moon wants to be the most important person to the people around them and so this could actually work out well if like because gemini gets really caught up in the moment and so in that moment that person is the most important but it could kind of come back to bite them in the butt because that moment passes so quickly with gemini and but with leo that moment of wanting to be the most important has not passed and so it could be a little hypocritical if like their their focus is always being pulled to different people but then they want to remain the most important person and now this may not even be like on purpose i don't think they're consciously being like oh like i want to be the most important but i don't want to have to do the same to other people i mean maybe if they're an asshole but for the most part i think it's like it, it's not on purpose it's that they want to be seen as the most important and in that moment and that other person they're talking to is the most important but then it's like when the moment passes and they're now they're caught up in the next moment and so it could leave that other person that they made feel important feel a little you know little chapped so they probably be very good at feeling making someone feel like number one in the moment just like they want to feel like number one but in terms of long term it may be a little harder because it's just hard for gemini to focus and to stay interested and not get bored so this pairing is someone who as opposed to some other gemini's where anything and everything can be interesting and, and worth pursuing and making plans around this combination needs to be properly interested and passionate about the subject in order to fully pursue it in order to fully devote their time and energy to it because the leo moon most fire signs need to have some form of passion or interest around the topic in order to really devote their time and energy into it if they're not passionate about it they don't want to give it the time of day and so this is someone who they probably can have like a conversation about everything and anything an interesting conversation but in terms of like if they're wanting to like go to school for something or actually like fully pursue something as a career or get married to someone it's it's going they're going to have to be passionate about it it can't just be like another shiny object that there's going to have to be something bigger attached to it because of that leo moon and usually with the leo moon it has to do with maybe something that gives them status or attention and treats them like the star that they are you know they they want to be in the spotlight to a degree or at least be achieving something that holds some form of recognition for achieving it but this will be a pretty powerful combination when they want to pursue something when they're interested and passionate because these two signs do really feed off of each other much like gemini and aries because they are sextile each other and so it actually could be a really good blend and they really feed off of each other and can achieve whatever they whatever they put their mind and their heart into because of that leo moon 
that's all I have planned for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Like I mentioned earlier, I have paid birth charts available. And so if you would like a more complete analysis of your chart, I have different packages and prices available with a link in the description. And if you're interested in relationships and compatibility and all that great stuff and want an amazing relationship like the one I have, then link in the description. And we're talking an Aries sun, Sagittarius moon that managed to settle down. So it's pretty incredible when you think about it. Anyway, so paid birth chart readings and my relationship course all available with links in the description. Description. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already considered liking this video and subscribing I'd really appreciate it and thank you to everyone who has helped support this channel so far and Brought it to where it is. I monetized with over 2,000 subscribers now. So thank you very much